What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh yeah guys, so we got stuff going on. We got lasers lasering, we got carpenters carpentering over here. Yeah, we were having to make a whole lot of circuit boards at this point in time. Uh, so I have this chest full of the right amount of stuff for the intricate circuit boards. And I put another chest over here full of other stuff which is transferring to this one. And then this chest is transferring to these three carpenters which are making intricate circuit boards. We could set this up uh, through applied energistics, but I didn't because we have patterns for other things in here. Basic circuit board is for this one. So anyway, uh, this is just a workaround. This is only temporary just so we can make large quantities of these circuit boards. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to make quantum solar panels. So we have five of them right here. Is it still crafting? Yeah, I think we're still making two more. Yeah, we're making these quantum solar panels. These are used in the recipe for the creative energy cell. Uh, I started laying out a lot of the stuff for making our four more <laughs> creative energy cells to make the creative portable tank. Yeah, and these guys go in the center, something like right in here, this general area. Yeah, we're gonna need 36 of these, nine times four to make all four of these cells, all right? So let's go to, let's see, where do we wanna go? We actually, before we go anywhere, can we tell this thing to make 10 more? Do we have the stuff or are we missing something? We are missing the scenarium. Yeah, I have to keep taking glowstone with me to the the uh, quarry world. Uh, glowstone, let me take some more with me so we can <laughs> get this stuff going while we are there. Don't want that. All right, yeah, I don't know how much we need, how much it's done. Uh, I keep going back and forth, placing solar panels, in fact, uh, quantum, let me, did I not just have like five of those on me? Am I going crazy? Uh, what? <laughs> Hold on. Where did those go? Oh, I put them down here. Right. I am going crazy. Uh, it's early in the day and I feel like I've been playing too long already guys. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I keep making quantum solar panels and I keep taking them over here to the quarry age and I keep setting them down so we can make the scenarium faster. Like so, one more, okay, cool. So all of our power right now is going to our molecular transformer, which is currently accepting 204,000 EU per tick. You can see that number go up a little bit. Yeah, these solar panels, they can generate 4,096 EU per tick and they can output twice the amount. So what's going on is every time this thing finishes one of its pieces of glowstone, it stops accepting power for a couple of ticks, I guess. Yeah, so the solar panels have enough time to make more power than this thing is using. And then, yeah, this doubles the number every single time it finishes for just a tick or two. Yeah, we have a decent amount of the scenario in here. All right, we'll fill that back up. We'll take these. Let's go back to the overworld. <laughs> Such a crazy thing. Going back and forth, making so many resources, making so many solar panels. Now are we ready? Can we do it now? Oh, we can. The only problem is, yeah, the circuit boards. We need to make 190 more of those things. Let's just tell this thing to go. Uh, yeah, we have to make 190 more of those things. And these are taking literally forever to craft. I wish uh, Forestry had the upgrades for speed for the carpenters like they do for the squeezers and the centrifuges. Maybe we'll see that in the future in some other update. I don't know. Yeah, this thing just goes pretty slow, though. So anyway, we are making quantum solar panels so we can make our upgraded, or I guess our four energy cells. For our creative portable tank, yeah, we need this. So we're gonna need uh, some bedrockium drums. These aren't super terrible to make. Yeah, we just need bedrockium ingots to make these. And we are making those uh, yeah, we have these on auto craft. In fact, yeah, we're gonna use bedrockium for some other stuff here. Let's check this out. So there's the green heart canisters. And in order to get green heart canisters, we need yellow heart canisters, which means we have to make red heart canisters, which means we have to do all this stuff. I'm probably going to auto craft this just because it's a lot of crafting. I don't want to do by hand. So anyway, uh, yeah, we can make these, but in order to make the green hearts, we need Galgadorian blocks, bedrockium blocks, iridium blocks, and nether star blocks. Well, the iridium is pretty easy. In fact, I think I might have already made that. Yeah. So we have 
you know, 3,200 iridium ore, and we can just smelt those down into the ingots. Nine ingots turn into a block. We have those blocks. Uh, let's grab, uh, what was the other ones? I think nether star block was another one. We don't have these crafted. Let's make these. I think that's forbidden magic. Yeah, forbidden magic makes these. So we need 10 of these nether star blocks. All right. Uh, let's take a look again. We need... Yeah, the Bedrockium and the Galgadorian. All right, so I already have this crafted up. That takes a while to do, so I did this uh, so we didn't have to wait on that. And then finally, yeah, the Bedrockium. Okay. There we go. There is the 10 things we need for our 10 green hearts. Got it. So green hearts get, we have those now. Uh, we need the pineapple upside down cake. Now this is a thing... Yeah, this is the thing here. So we need pineapple, and we don't have any. Let's go over to spawn real quick. I was looking at the Pam's Harvest Craft website where it, there's a wiki or whatever. It tells you where you can find all the different things. Oh, I forgot I have bees set up over here. How long have these things been here? Are they still going? <laughs> well, I guess I turned them off. I just forgot I had these hives here. Huh. So anyway, yeah, uh, on the Pam's Harvest Craft uh, website, it says where you can get the different things. I was looking for pineapple, and it says that you can find pineapple in a tropical garden, which spawn in jungle biomes and a few other different, like, swamps, I think. You can find them rarely. Uh, but yeah, I was searching all over here at spawn, since this is like a jungle swamp style biome. Uh, yeah, I was looking all over, and I finally found some. I think they're over here. They were by this village. I, oh, and you know what? I think it's further this way. Oh, that's a creeper. That's not what we're looking for. Yeah, there is some of them. <laughs> they're, they're over here, I promise you guys, because I saw them. I really should have put a waypoint. I knew I should have waypointed them. Uh, okay, let me find them real quick, and we will be right back. Ah, found them. Okay. So, yeah, I just slept till daytime. I think I can see them right there. Here we go. Yeah. Tropical garden. Found them. Okay. So, we are hoping to get a pineapple. There's one. Cool. All right. So, I got to figure out how we can get more than one pineapple. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way. Can we get pineapple seeds? Oh, you know what? Okay. I didn't even think about that. We might have already had pineapple seeds. Uh, well, let me go ahead and break these things. So we got kiwi there, we got pineapple seeds. Do we already have pineapple seeds over here? I'm gonna feel silly if we do. Oh, we do, dang it. <laughs> so anyway, we got pineapple. So we can use the pineapple to make this. We also needed cherry. Uh, so there's Pam's Harvest Craft cherries. Um, I saw over here, I was kind of flying around looking for cherries and yeah, there so happens to be a cherry tree right here, which is pretty cool. You just right click on it to get it maybe. Did that just disappear? Where did that go? Magnet? <laughs> uh, anyway, we can use bone meal on these, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we can just get all the cherries like that. So that's pretty cool. Very easy to do. We already had some in our system, though. So you can take cherries if you only have one. And I think it's an oak sapling. I think you can combine these to make yourself a cherry tree. Yeah, there's a cherry sapling. So we can do this and we could grow another cherry tree if we really wanted to, but since you can bone meal the existing one, there's really not a lot of point. Uh, let me just go ahead and get some bone meal. Just for fun, we'll grow this thing because we made it. Grow, yeah, there we go. And then more cherries, woo. <laughs> cool, so anyway, uh, we have the cherries, we have the pineapples. I'm gonna have to grow those for the agri-craft method, I think. Yeah, I don't even know why I never thought about having the seeds. I assumed you could only get those from the tropical gardens. Uh, we need walnuts, forestry, Pam's Harvest Craft walnut. Um, now that's got me worried. I don't know if we have a walnut. No, I don't think we do. Uh, up above our base though. Yeah, we have these right here. These are nutmeg. I've seen pecans. Do we have walnuts? Hold on. No, we don't have walnuts. Um, okay, so we're gonna have to go and find some walnuts. I guess I will fly around looking for those. 
Yeah, uh, we could also do the forestry method, I suppose. We could do the tree breeding, but that takes a bit of time. It's not super interesting to do. It requires the bees to do their thing. And we don't really have any bees set up right now that have the highest pollination. I mean, we can do it that way. It's just going to take more time than I'm willing to spend on it at this point. So yeah, let me go ahead and figure out how we can find those walnut trees so we can get some walnuts similar to the nutmeg. And we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I've been kind of going around for a while now, going to all the different forest biomes that we have around, but the problem is there's just so many trees are so dense together, and the terrain changes, so you have to keep going up, and anyway, it's just not so good. What is this? This is avocado. Yeah, I, I keep finding the Pam's Harvest Craft ones, but not the right ones. I did find a chestnut tree. Probably should have grabbed some of those chestnuts, but I didn't. Uh... I think what we're going to do, though, I, I still want to not do the bees if possible. Where are you? You are pears. Okay. Uh, I want to not do the bees if possible as far as tree breeding goes. That is guaranteed method, and we could just grind it out and do it. I think what I'm going to do, though, is make another RF Tools dimension that's a forest, and we're going to do a flat terrain. Always daytime if we can. I don't remember if we have the thing. What are you, nutmeg? That's nutmeg. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, I think uh, if we do flat terrain forest, that's always daytime or, you know, something equivalent, whatever, uh, it would be a lot easier to go around and try and find these things. So I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I've been searching for a while now, not really being successful, and it's not super easy to find these things. Uh, yeah, there's a cobweb tree here. I've already alluded this previously. I'm in ex previously explored chunks, so there's nothing really new here. Uh, but yeah, we never really looked around for the Pam's Harvest Craft stuff <laughs> previously. So anyway, let's go back to the base. Let's make ourselves an RF Tools world, just a flat forest, and we will continue our search there. All right, guys, so we're about to make the new dimension. It's nothing special. It's just a flat forest. So we got material default, liquid default, terrain flat, controller single, biome forest, sky normal, sky normal day, night, fog, uh, sky body none, default mobs, effect none, feature none, and structure none. So it's nothing special. It is just like the example mining world basically that's on the uh, RF Tools wiki. So yeah, we'll just call this flat fault, <laughs> flat forest. Yeah, we'll just call it this. And I did make myself another dimension builder. Yeah, we have a second one now, which is pretty awesome. So we can have multiple dimensions loaded at the same time now. Uh, yeah, I figured since we had the automatic draconium, awakened draconium thing set up, yeah, I just went and I farmed up some hearts, and we did some extra one of those blocks so we can make the awakened flux capacitors for this thing. Yeah, it is really expensive, but I think it's worth it, and I'll probably end up making a few more of these things eventually when we get around to it. We still got a full stack of those flux capacitors to make for our creative portable tank which hopefully we will get to this episode. Uh, we're just waiting for this thing to finish up here. Is it done? Yeah, it's done. All right, and we got power, cool. All right, so we, oh, we dial from here. That's right, I was like clicking and I was like, why don't we see anything? All right, let's dial here. It says it's fine, cool. Uh, we have this on the thing, armor and hotbar. Let's go to our flat forest. Oh, that's weird, it's nighttime. Okay. Well, I guess we're starting at night. Yeah, we can't sleep here. Uh, yeah, so pretty much we're just going to <laughs> do the same thing we've been doing, except now we should be able to walk underneath a good portion of these trees. Uh, hopefully we can get the Pam's Harvest Craft trees here. I haven't seen one yet. I assume that they are just random spawn from an oak tree. Maybe. <laughs> Pam's Harvest Craft, where are you? Anyway, yeah, let's just keep walking around. Uh, I'll fight off the mobs as we come to them. Yeah, because they're not a big deal. And yeah, uh, hopefully we can find some Pam's Harvest Craft stuff. Well, guys, so I think I found out after exploring this dimension for a while. <laughs> yeah, I went kind of far, about 2,000 blocks away. I was looking at the underside of all these trees. I think I found out after all this time that Pam's Harvest Craft does not spawn in RF Tools dimensions. That's a lot of these little buildings in this small little area. I'm just noticing. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it doesn't look like Pam's Harvest Craft is here. 
Unfortunately, I didn't know that before. Did you guys know that? I certainly didn't. Anyway, let's go back to the base. So we can't get uh, the walnuts that way. Uh, we do have another method. Oh, you know what? I must have put all my beef wellingtons away. Yeah, we do have another method. Uh, there's an item in Pam's Harvest Craft called the market where you can purchase any single seed or item. <laughs> yeah, you can purchase it right here, but it does cost a watering can. The watering can was semi-expensive. I don't remember. Yeah, we should have all these things. I should be able to duplicate all of this stuff. Um, What was it? Back. So beet, corn, and kiwi. Beet, corn, kiwi. So we have the kiwi, we have the corn. Where's my beets? I don't know. Well, anyway, once we get the thing, I should be able to just buy. Okay, anyway, whatever. I'll figure that all out. Uh, we'll just use our current watering can. Even though the recipe says empty, I don't know if the one that we have is going to work. Let's just double check this recipe. Yeah, this says empty. I don't know if that's going to work or if I'm going to have to build another watering can. Let's just try like this. Oh, it does work. All right, so we're getting rid of our watering can. All right, so let's set this down. Okay, here we go. So I should be able to purchase the beet seed. Yeah, here, here it is. Let me grab emeralds. Okay. Beet seed, buy. Okay, cool. So now I can remake my watering can. In fact, I should just purchase a few of those whatever emeralds don't matter anymore uh so we are looking for walnut found it okay so there is a walnut sapling awesome <laughs> uh there's our emeralds back so we just need some bone meal like so cool so now i guess i should have remembered this <laughs> but yeah it's one of those items you don't really use that often i think we'll just plant it here and then we can cut it down it won't really matter once we have walnuts we can make more of the saplings cool here we go walnuts for days awesome all right so we have the walnuts we have the cherries we have the pineapples we should be able to make our pineapple upside down cake finally let's get back to this yeah we also need dough pineapple Oh, you know what? I need to grow the pineapples. All right, so we also need to get the dough. We're going to go over to Wellington Towers. All right, yeah, the dough we already have made up. We were using those in the Beef Wellington, so we already had this process completely automated. Here's a full stack of dough. Cool. All right, so yeah, let me go ahead and get the rest of the stuff that we need. I'm going to grow some pineapples and all of that, and we will continue on. All right, guys. Well, I just had to make myself an apple tree over here. Yeah, I just combined an apple with an oak sampling. I just spammed a whole bunch of bone meal, collected a whole lot of apples. We have all the patterns set up now. So let's do green. Let's see if we can make 10 of these. And let's just see all the resources. Yeah, it requires 18 apples, so I guess it's not that much. 72 blocks of gold, which is kind of expensive. Uh, I made all the pineapple upside down cake. Yeah, we have to do the notch apples. The jeweled apples, so 36 diamonds go into that. Uh, 10 of the yellow hearts, 10 of the red hearts. We're making the canisters. All right, so let's do it. That should be a pretty quick craft, I do believe. And there it is. There is 10 green heart canisters. Awesome. So now we're going to be invincible plus 10 more. <laughs> nice. So now we should have a total of 40 health or 10 regular hearts, and then 10 orange, then 10 yellow, and then 10 green. Yes. We have a lot of health right now. There's even further ways we can increase our health. We can get the blue hearts uh, by doing, I think there's a Batania ring. I seem to remember this from before that I had. Uh, yeah, on the FTB Infinity server a long time ago. Anyway, green hearts, when we have pretty much invincible armor, yeah, I think we're good for a little while. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, can we do any more of these quantum solars? We have nine of them. <laughs> are we still crafting? Yeah, we are. And we are waiting on, yeah, these intricate circuit boards. Of course we are. Cool. Anyway, so let's put nine of these here. Yeah, we still need to collect the rest of them for our quarry world. Uh, let's take a look at this one more time. Endury Energy Cell. This one right here. <laughs> Yeah, so we need the Draconic Flux Capacitors. You know what? Did we ever craft those? I don't remember. No, I don't think we did. Let's craft up these guys. We should have everything in the system now. Yes, everything is now done. 
Draconic cores that took forever to do. Weaken cores. All right, let's tell it to make 64 of those things. Hopefully, it's not going to go too slow. It's only going to take 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, uh, the draconi the molten draconium that I used, I guess I melted down way more than what I needed. I think we had, what, like 6,000 buckets before. Now we're down to 5,000, so I didn't quite need as much as I did. But, you know, we're good to go for the next time we want to create uh, four more of these energy cells, I suppose. Anyway, yeah, let's let this crafting happen. I will collect the rest of the quantum solars. I will make all of the cell frames that we need. Yep, let me get some more stuff done and we'll be back. All right, guys, so we should be ready to go here. Uh, yeah, we have all the quantum solar panels. This has taken forever to build. We still have a few in the quarry age, I think, or I guess the quarry world. We have like 12 of them, so we're still producing about 100,000 EU per tick, which isn't too bad. But yeah, we did knock down our EU production quite a bit by using these. So anyway, uh, there's our creative energy cell, so we should be able to create one. Mm -hmm. And then we have the unstackable stuff that I'm going to have to put in here. Okay, so I was talking about last episode that if we place this down, there's no way that I know of to pick these up. I tried all of the different wrenches. Like, I even made all these other ones that we didn't try <laughs> previously. And yeah, none of these things, the build craft one, the Yetta wrench, the flux infused Omni wrench, and the smart wrench from RF tools, none of these are able to pick this thing up. They can only turn them. Just show you guys in shift clicking with this one, just to make sure you guys know that <laughs> I did test these. I'm not messing around. Flux infused Omni wrench. Yeah, clicking it just turns it, shift clicking it, nothing. So there really is no way that you can wrench these. However, it was brought to my attention that there's an item from Industrial Craft 2. Actually, I guess it is the Gravity Suite, whatever. Uh, the Vajra. The Vaj. We talked about this before that I wanted to make one of these. So I set up all the patterns. We're going to make one. Actually, I just saw that I used an intricate circuit board. Okay, good. We had it. <laughs> Vajra. Nice. All right. So I... Yeah, we got EU power. Where's the EU power? Down here. Let's break a block. Break this block. We don't really have a good way to charge things up, so I'll just stick it right here in this particular MFSU. There we go. Now it is completely full. Cool. All right, so the Vajra can break this block if we... Yeah, shift right click does not do anything. You got to do shift M right click. The, the letter M, like mode switch. So shift, or maybe it's just M. No, just M right click. So silk touch mode enabled. So shift right click. Got it. So yes, you can in fact pick these up in survival mode without switching game modes. I did not know this last episode until after I got done recording. Now I know no reason to switch to creative mode ever again. Yeah, so Vajra, M right click to switch to silk touch and then shift right click to break it. And this also works, I tried this in uh, a creative test world. Yeah, this does work with the creative portable tank and it does work with the creative mana pool. So this Vajra can break pretty much every single block, which is awesome. Cool, so let me uh, get the rest of these non-stackable. <laughs> yeah, give me. let me get the rest of these non-stackable items in the crafting grid. I'll make up the other four, I guess the other three creative energy cells. And we will look at making the creative portable tank. All right, guys, so we are just about there, man, for these creative energy cells. That's crazy. Yeah, we are just about there. We just have to make this one final piece, this Ender Tank Controller. Do we have the Eyes of Ender Tesseract? Got it. Cool. There it is. Create a portable tank. Do it. Nice. So create a portable tank. We got it. Let's place it down. Let's look at it. It's so beautiful. And then, yeah, just to show that we can do this, shift right click, and we can break it. Awesome. So, like I said before, the create a portable tank, you can place this down, you can click a liquid on it. So, for instance, if we wanted water, now we have all of the water. So, we can fill up a bedrockium drum full of the stuff. Uh, can we do, let's see, uh, let's do a bucket. Let's. Can we do a bucket of the molten draconium? No, well, let me do that. Uh, what about the fluid patterns? The templates, pattern, these things. 
Can we click like, I don't know, XP pattern? Well, let me do it this way. I've never tried. No, well, let me do that. Okay. Let's do a lava bucket. Where's the lava? Right here. So I believe you just click this. Yeah, and then we switch that over to lava. Mm -hmm. So we could do any of these fluids that we have in our system that we can get a bucket out of. So if we want a seed oil, molten obsidian, blazing pyrothium, primal mana seems like a pretty good one to me since this is like such a pain in the butt to make myself. Uh, all right, so we can put this one bucket back because we don't want to waste it since that stuff is expensive. Uh, Ben Rockium drum. This. Give me. Right now. Go right there. Wrench it. All of the primal mana. Oh man, look how fast that is filling up too. That's like five, about 300 buckets a second. Something like that. That is a lot. Okay. So we never have to worry about primal mana again. We have it all. <laughs> so I'm curious if we break this with the Vajra. Okay, it still stays as the primal mana. Yeah, I don't think there's a way that we can get rid of the source in there. We can just switch it around. Whoops, I placed on the wrong spot. Give me. Yep, fill up my drum full of the primal mana. Oh, we got to switch the thingy. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome that we can uh, break this thing and place it wherever we want to now. Uh, I wish I would have known about this before. I, I really don't like going into creative mode, but I felt like that was the only way that we could do it. I just wasn't aware of it. Now I know. So that's pretty awesome. We never have to do it again. Uh, so creative portable tank. That is another thing marked off our list. However, guys, there is one more creative portable tank that we're going to have to make because in NEI, this thing is used in another recipe and that is for the, the creative mana pool. Yeah. Yeah, we have to use the arcane infusion with a creative portable tank and all of this crazy stuff, whatever all this stuff is. I don't even know. This is going to take us a minute uh, to get to this point. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see me go through all the magic stuff and make this particular item. I'm fine with doing it if you guys want me to. <laughs> I know some people don't like watching magic, but I mean, that is another thing that we can do in this series. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. But yep, I think we're going to wrap the episode up here for today, guys. Oh man, so much stuff, so much cool stuff. We never have to worry about resources again. We have all of the power. We have all of the fluids. <laughs> it's so awesome. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.